we can probably get started. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Perfect. That's great. Thank you. And can, um, can you see my screen? Yes, I can, Owen. Okay, thanks, Fadi. Perfect. Right, that's great. So let's get started. I'll just put this into presentation mode. So thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, this is a customer engagement webinar presented by the Customer Solutions and Insights team, which is comprised really of, um, I suppose, the Power Platform, including CRM, and also uh, inclusive of Power BI as well. And the focus for today is going to be specifically around customer engagement. So this will be digital acquisition uh, of leads from web, um, this, the, the kind of standard CRM process, and then how you can use Power BI to augment that and drive things like you know pipeline health um, and sales performance as well. You know, and we can we, we can touch on a few other topics as we go. So just by way of an introduction, um, we're pro strategy. We have a number of key focus areas. Um, so basically, I suppose you could say there's a couple of pillars to the business. There's the customer solutions and insights, which I've talked about. There's the ERP solutions, um, which is largely nav based um, and other products like uh, Foodware 365 and LS Nav for retail. And then lastly, we have financial planning and analytics, which is largely focused on the, the Cognos uh, suite of products. We've been around for over 30 years, you know, growing uh, continually into double digits, kind of year over year in terms of kind of revenue um, and also growing our headcount um, with most of our staff spread across two locations in, in Cork for Moy and also in City West largely playing in the Irish market, but also would have significant um, overseas revenues as well. Partnering with both uh, Microsoft and IBM, uh, gold partners with both, you know, and I think one of the reasons we choose to partner with those is they have uh, proven to be very kind of stable and very innovative in terms of the level of investment that they make in their products. We're gonna talk obviously about the Microsoft um, product stack today. And I think what you'll see um, throughout is, you know, Microsoft are investing very, very heavily, particularly in AI. And I think they're commoditizing AI to the degree where it's almost becoming self-service. There are things people can do now with Power BI, with the Power Platform, you know, products like Customer Insights, where that previously you would have needed, you know, a small team of data scientists and, and heavy competency at that space in order to be able to achieve it. So moving on, that, that's, that's our introduction. Um, if we look at things like a typical customer engagement and what those requirements might be, the customers we're working with are increasingly looking to drive an omni-channel engagement. So this is where maybe they're advertising, um, you know, in the social space, so Facebook, um, LinkedIn, Twitter, etc. cetera. Um, you know, uh, outbounding emails, um, using SMS. So it's really about kind of knowing how your customers will engage with you and knowing how to better engage at an individual or personalized level with specific customers. So what we want to touch on today is, you know, how we get that social piece, how we get that into CRM, um, and then, you know, taking a look at using, um, you know, our partner choice product click dimensions in this space, how you can use that to kind of drive your marketing automation, you know, taking a look at things like um, lead distribution and actioning, you know, looking at your pipeline, maybe with tools like Power BI, um, and then quick chat about customer insights, you know, what, what Microsoft are doing in that space, how that can be used. And, you know, lastly, just taking a look at analytics, how that can be used to drive I suppose, identify and improve your marketing return investment um, and just get a look at the, you know, the performance of your business overall. So in terms of the suite that we're going to look at, what we've been doing is, you know, I suppose, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the team we have here is bringing a number of different products together to create this sort of engagement suite where you have, you know, the marketing focus, 
um, you know, from a lead generation uh, campaigns through to sales, um, and, and lastly through to the services piece as well. And that's hugely important when it comes to customer retention. We're not going to get into the services aspect of this today. It's more focused on, I suppose, customer acquisition um, and, and sales and marketing performance. But also, you know, it's it's using the, the tools that we mentioned earlier. So your CRM, your click dimensions, your Power BI, the Power Platform to kind of deliver against each of these capability sets. And as different as everybody's business is, no businesses are really that different. Sales is sales, marketing is marketing, you know, servicing a customer base, whether it's a service or a product business that you're involved in tends to be the same as well. So it's really about taking kind of some standard patterns and best practices um, that we've been kind of developing and working on and applying those to your particular business or business model to extract um, maximum value. So in terms of the fabric, and again, and I know I'm going to repeat myself a little bit here, but it, it's really because, you know, this isn't any one particular product. It's, a, it's about a platform play, you know, and it's the Microsoft platform play, and it's using different products within that. But hopefully this graphic sort of illustrates where some of those products sit within the customer engagement fabric, um, you know, and how they're used to sort of create that um, holistic solution. The big thing with this as well is, you know, to be successful in this space, it's about creating an experience that's simple, but also um, integrated and ideally within a single location. So if you're talking about, you know, a sales person or a marketing function, you ideally want them to be able to get everything they need for their function within CRM. So, you know, go there, look at the performance um, of, you know, a sales territory, look at the performance of a particular marketing campaign, get to the return on investment across the board, you know, for a total marketing spend. Um, you know, you're, you will get higher adoption by providing a slicker, unified experience and making everything available in one place. And the great thing about the Power Platform is, you know, Microsoft are investing heavily in kind of creating this low code slash no code capability so that it's very easy trigger events and automate, um, I suppose, things that traditionally might have needed human intervention. So, you know, for example, if you are in, I don't know, an incident happens where you need to have some follow up within two weeks. And if that follow up doesn't happen and isn't flagged in the system, that a flow task could be used to create a trigger to the person responsible for that follow up, get them to do it or, you know, prompt them in a gentle manner to do it um, and sort of streamline and optimize your business process that way. You know, and I, here I think what I've done is a position click dimension. So you can kind of see that that's playing in that sort of um, lead social space. It does, you know, it can move up into the opportunity, but for the purpose of this, I think that's the right place to put it. In terms of where CRM ends and begins, for the purposes of today, we're really going to take it up to the, the end of the opportunity phase where, you know, we've a one opportunity and, and typically from there, you go on to create a quote or an order. Um, CRM has the capability of creating quotes and orders, but what we're going to do is, is not really get into that because you might have a NAV or you might have some other ERP or some other system that you use for that. So let's just, you know, let's make an assumption. We're going to go to a point and it's either happening within CRM or it's happening within an, an ERP to, to kind of fully close that out. One of the things we talked about at the beginning pretty quickly was the digital and social customer acquisition. This is critical to all businesses today. 70% of the sales cycle is happening before um, customers are typically having conversation with you you know, the, the business owner or, or business, you know, the sales leader. Um, people know what they want. They've done their research. So when they come to your website or, or they pick up the phone and call you, we're becoming engaged in the sales cycle much further into the cycle than may have been the case a decade ago. So what makes this really, what's really important with this is the ability to capture 
that social and digital interaction and convert it to a known lead. Um, we're going to see a demo on that today, and I, I'm thinking that's something that you're going to be very interested in. Um, and obviously, when you get into that space, GDPR compliance becomes key, and that's really around the messaging and the language that you use as part of that process. Today is not about GDPR compliance, but it's really just a nod to the fact that um, when you do something like this, you need to do it in a way that is compliant, and that's something we can help with as well. Um, I'm not going to dwell on this because I want to get into the demo, but this is really about providing that unified CRM experience, making it easy, making it a simple to follow process. Microsoft have recently upgraded the user interface and dynamics. It's much, much slicker. Um, and what you can do is you can kind of customize each step of the way so it's intuitive and, and what people see is related to the phase or the stage that they're in within the process. And then the other piece we're going to focus on during the demo as well is the campaign management. So whether you're dealing with something inbound or whether you want to create a bespoke outbound campaign and how you re react to that and how that all of that gets captured, that's something we're actually going to see as part of the demo. The last piece we're going to see um, as part of the, the demo following the CRM pieces, we're just going to take a quick look at um, a couple of Power BI dashboards that can be viewed or rendered uh, either within CRM or outside of CRM, it doesn't matter which, um, where we're going to look at you know, how you can measure uh, the success of your lead to close process and you know your marketing, but also then just have a look at your pipeline as well. So what I'm going to do now is hand over to Fadi um, and he's going to present. So I'm just going to make him a presenter. One thing while I'm doing that, I just need to find Fadi in the list, is, and I said I would talk about it, but we're not going to demo this today, is customer insights. This is new capability that was released by delete the meeting. Fadi, are you able to present? Okay. Yes. So just, just before you do, um, Customer Insights was released by Microsoft in April of this year. And this is their, uh, one of the investments they're making is was commoditizing, um, you know, understanding of AI. There's uh, some background noise there. Um, this is, sorry, I'm just getting background, so I'm just going to, I'm not too sure what's happening. The, the customer insights piece, and actually, can you still see my screen or has Fadi started to present? Oh, we've gone to Fadi, have we? Okay, I can come back to customer insights at the end. Fadi, why don't you take over? Thanks, Owen. So, uh, good afternoon. I would like to start with a quick uh, introduction to CRM as a system. I'm sure most of you are already aware that CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. Uh, as any classical CRM system, you have uh, three pillars, basically uh, sales, marketing, and customer service slash operations. Uh, however, Microsoft has extended this beyond this idea. Uh, they started first what they call XRM, basically standing for, for anything relationship management, where you no longer just do uh, CRM, but also other functionalities such as standing management, finance and operations. Uh, you do also uh, HR, etc., and even field service uh, management. Okay, so. Uh, Recently, Microsoft had rebranded this, rebranded this under Power Platform, and CRM is now known as Dynamics 365 Customer Engagement. Uh, Power Platform has the same uh, approach, but it's more uh, I mean, like wider, a wider approach. Basically, it's uh, spanning all of other Microsoft services. So, if you have Office 365, for instance, it's already integrated out of the box. Uh, so, under the Power Platform, you have uh, uh, features such as Power Ads, Power Flow, and Power BI, as uh, just Owen just introduced, just mentioned. And uh, <clears throat> uh, you can basically have like different connect connectors, connectors between Dynamics C65 and other applications. 
So let's say, for example, um, uh, you wish to integrate your application Dynamics 365 with SharePoint or Outlook or even something third party like, such as Facebook, LinkedIn or Twitter. You can do so using either Power Apps, you can do so either uh, using uh, Powerflow or Power BI, which basically aggregate data from different sources. <clears throat> so, as, we, as Owen mentioned today, we are going to start by capturing a new customer from a web page. So, using Azure Services, I got uh, this quick website, it took under five minutes, thanks to uh, Azure Apps. Uh, this is a new Microsoft uh, service. Uh, basically, it's a serverless technology which allows you to create quick websites without the need for actual servers or physical servers or even virtual servers. It's all serverless, meaning you don't uh, invest in licensing or uh, virtual environments whatsoever. Basically, uh, increasing your OPEX in favor for uh, CAPEX. So it's uh, it's uh, in the end of the day, it's having an impact on your bottom line because, as you understand, OPEX is deductible out of your taxes. CAPEX is not. So this is, uh, let's say you have, let's contact us with an inquiry field here. Let's say I have a new customer called uh, John uh, Tomlin, our CEO. Another hmm, focus. Interested in CRM. My submit. Uh, uh, this is, by the way, customizable, and this is uh, goes to click dimensions here, which is uh, integrates with Dynamics 365 to create a new lead, and then you start with CRM cycle here. Before <clears throat> before I, I go there, I just uh, wanted to highlight something here. Here you have the three functions sales, service, and marketing. And here is our application here, Click Dimensions. And uh, as a CRM, it's, it's mainly uh, toward your external world as an uh, organization. So it's mainly how you engage with your customers, either it's new totally customers as leads or in a, an existing accounts and you wish to nurture them and uh, do some sort of upselling or cross-selling if you have like uh, uh, like upgrades of some sort that you wish to sell to the customer or if you have like uh, other products that you wish to sell as cross-selling and uh, of course uh, operations which is like uh, if you have like uh, some sort of customer service case management so it's quite helpful for a salesperson going to, uh, to meet a customer to have some details in hand and uh, to be able there to uh, basically talk to the customer uh, based on their history with the company, like uh, if there is any current uh, ongoing cases with the customer, if the, is the customer happy about the current service or not so much, uh, is the customer already interested in other opportunities. And thanks to the Power Platform, you can have uh, some quick apps like these. So for instance, I created this app under five minutes before this demo actually. Uh, you have here like a list of your existing accounts and this is what Owen just mentioned. This is no code slash low code. So I've just created this, this application that accesses my data here as an account. This is all coming from, uh, uh, from our CRM database and uh, I can edit it if I wish on the fly and uh, that would be great and all of this is within the Power App Studio which is uh, very easy to use and user friendly with no code whatsoever. Okay. Another nice feature would be uh, Power Flow and here uh, as Owen mentioned we can uh, integrate with Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever social uh, network you have. So for instance I have this Facebook connector here connecting to my Power Strategy page Okay, so whenever there is a post, it can go to CRM and create a lead. And again, this is no code required. This is intended for business users to use, no development basically. So back to our CRM screen here. Once you open the system, the first thing you're going to see is your dashboards. 
And uh, this dashboard, by the way, happens to come from Power BI because it's integrated after all with uh, platform here. So it's seamless integration. You have uh, different options here. You can have your own dashboard. You can create a new one out of uh, scratch, or you can use one of the existing. Let's say, for example, example marketing dashboard. So here we can see, for instance, uh, the performance of my marketing. I can see uh, the campaign types. I can see, uh, like, let's say, for instance, uh, all campaigns for current fiscal year and uh, what is the campaign budget versus the actual costs. I can see uh, revenue generated by campaign, so I can know how effective my campaigns are. And this is because, after all, sales and operations are integrated with marketing. Also, I can see uh, leads by source, so I can see how effective my campaigns again i can see okay this campaign had generated more leads than this one uh, i can also see like for me as a user my open activities and my open campaigns there is also another dashboard called marketing social dashboard this one is pretty similar to the previous one but this one have like some sort of internal internal wall which you can communicate with your uh, your colleagues here, like uh, doing a webinar now for CRM slash analytics. Okay, my not typing. So this would send an update to all of the other employees on the company. So let's go to the first uh, screen under sales. It's usually all sales cycles usually start as leads. And here is the lead I just created from this page, if you remember. And as you can see uh, here, this, this screen, by the way, is fully customizable and configurable. 90% of what you can see here is configurable or customizable. Even this business process flow, uh, this is actually is intended to guide the salesperson through different stages. For let's say, let's say for instance, uh, you have a four stages sales process, starting with qualifications, uh, qualification going through development, proposing the enclosure. This is totally uh, configurable. You can basically do it as easy as this. You can simply edit the process using Power Apps I just mentioned. Just some time. So you can add stages, you can uh, modify data types, and uh, sorry, data steps, and add like if you are if you really don't wish to have like purchase time frame or estimated budget, it's, it's not part of your process. You can remove it, or you can even add more. And for the scope of this uh, demo, I'm not going to get into this details. So basically, let's say I'm I'm, uh, I'm happy with the qualification criteria. Let's say I'm a salesperson. If this is an existing contact, no existing account, no purchase time frame. Let's say I did call call that uh, lead and he's interested immediately. What is the estimated budget? Let's say 100 uh, k. Okay, thanks, Jennifer. What is the purchase time frame or the purchase process? Actually, it's like uh, individual. Uh, identify the decision makers uh, and then. Basically, this is a stakeholder, so you are supposed to fill it as a salesperson. And if you have some sort of uh, summary, like uh, let's say, for instance, uh, CRM for sales, and I save the changes. If I'm happy with this qualification criteria, I can proceed forward and just click next stage or basically uh, qualify here. And the nice thing about this. This business process flow is it goes forward to another total different record, which is, which is opportunity. This is an opportunity type record, and the user is not switching screens. It basically have the same look and feel, uh, and there's a different criteria here that the user have to fill. Okay. So uh, going back to uh, capturing uh, leads from the web, uh, like I mentioned, this is a fully customizable and all under Power Apps. 
Under Power Apps, uh, you have either Canvas applications or mobile applications. We have Click Dimension, which is a mobile application. Okay, so uh, a quick introduction here is uh, we have uh, like, uh, okay, we can like send mails, you have uh, campaign automation. Uh, here is the, the basic records, uh, contacts, and leads and accounts. Uh, this is an app based on the Dynamics 365 uh, platform. So let's say, for instance, I'm interested in creating a new mail template for marketing. Okay. And uh, let's say I'm having like latest offering mail. And you have different editors here, like, uh, let me go to the quick. Okay. So let's say I can open the editor like this. And this is a drag and drop. You can basically modify, uh, you can select the template. Uh, let's take this one. And uh, I, this is basically a way for the user to be able to quickly create templates. So for instance, uh, I can select the company image here, maybe put a quick message here, like uh, latest offerings. Okay. And uh, maybe uh, change the colors. Uh, you also have like the capability to drag and drop. If you refresh here. Taking more time than usual. Let me open it again. Okay. Uh, let's say I, I wish to see how this mail is going to look in different uh, mail clients. So I'm going to do a quick review here. I can say, okay, uh, this is a desktop version. This is a mobile version. How it's going to look like? I might have an inbox review which will trigger this quick test. Let's do it quickly. You have certain allocated uh, trials per month, like seven reviews remaining for me so far in this month. And here you can see how the mail is going to look in every different uh, popular mail client, like Apple, Gmail, iPhone, Fadi. iPhone, et cetera. Fadi, uh, I think we're probably just getting into a little bit of too much uh, detail on this, given the, the time we have. What I'd, I'd like to um, show is the um, drag and drop nature of the outbound management, because um, I think that's something that would be of interest to people. So how they can react to leads hitting the web page and also how you can create dynamic campaigns at a high level. Sure, yeah. So after you define your mail template, and uh, basically already uh, you can uh, let's say you wish to have like some sort of marketing automation so you have this functionality uh, so let's say uh, i wish to have like this kind of automation for customer inquiries is my builder and on the screen you have either triggers actions or uh, timers so let's say for instance i wish to have the trigger to have info request which was a form i just uh, used earlier once the customer uh, fill it and uh, say okay uh, i'm happy with this and uh, click submit you have thanks plus information mail sent out automatically to this potential customer and automatically you add this to a new marketing list that you can use later for interested leads Marketing list is a, a very big, uh, interesting feature, by the way, in the marketing module uh, in CRM, where you can either stati uh, stati uh, statistically, sorry, uh, dynamically or statically uh, define uh, like members of your marketing lists. So um, 
Uh, now it's have been added to this marketing list and also I can notify like a salesperson to start working on it, maybe assign it to a, a salesperson as well. Wait for three days and then you can send some sort of a, a customer satisfaction survey and if the customer do open it, like survey open here, you can uh, and click the mail, you can send like a, a quick send to you maybe or maybe follow up later if they doesn't open this mail within like three days. So as you can see here, this is like uh, starting from the very early customer interaction, filling your online form. Okay, uh, going to the very end uh, of the process to follow up. Okay. Uh, back to marketing lists, I would like to show you this nice feature. So let's say uh, I wish to have like a dynamic list of all my existing customer contacts. Okay, so uh, you have like different types in, uh, of records in CRM, leads, contacts, or accounts. And you can set it to either like uh, to be dynamic or static, okay, this marketing list. So by static means whatever you're going to define, like uh, if you manage the members here, whatever you're going to put into it, it's going to stay like this forever, unless you, of course, you modify it. Okay, or you can have like a dynamic query, which will, whenever the, a new record is created in the system, is going to pick it up automatically and add it to this uh, member list. This is a nice feature because you can use it in cooperation with the campaign automation here. So let's say, for instance, you wish to have some sort of customer onboarding experience. This is not, not finished, so I'm going to do it now in front of you. Just while Fadi is, um, is showing this, the I mean, this is a really, really strong feature because not alone does it allow you do things nice, like engage a customer early for a new customer, it also allows you to become much more sophisticated. So imagine you have, you know, you're, you're a car dealer and, and you'll see what I'm using that example in a moment, um, and somebody's bought a car, you know, two and a half years ago, in all likelihood, that person might be getting ready for, you know, a refresh of their PCP. So you could have your CRM automatically engaging with that customer based on the fact that they bought two and a half years ago. So they will kind of, everyone will get dynamically added to that list and rolled off it as a follow on action takes place. So you can almost automate that piece of your sales process where you know you're interacting with the customer in that omni-channel way and that could be sms or it could be outbound email but also you could, with flow you could be triggering a follow-up call with the sales executive that's responsible for that account as well thanks Fadi. thank you thank you all so uh, for instance now this is a dynamic list once i can of course pick which list i'm going to use here okay uh, and uh, for instance, uh, I have a new customer added to this dynamic list, which I can use uh, the dynamic criteria I just used. So let's say once this uh, customer is um, uh, part, uh, basically qualified from a lead to an account, and now I have an account for this customer, and he have purchased an order, like let's say in the past 12 months or something, I can automatically add him to that dynamic list, which will trigger this event basically saying this customer was added to this list. So you can send some sort of a mail here. You have you can pick uh, from your existing uh, mails, let's say you can have some sort of uh, customer satisfaction survey maybe, or maybe some sort of like a thank you mail. So for the purpose of, uh, purposes of this, I'm going to use like, let's say customer satisfaction. And uh, from there you can say, okay, uh, what kind of interaction I might expect of this uh, customer? Um, so let's say an email interaction. As you can see, it's quite easy, drag and drop. You have this green uh, dot indicating that. Uh, okay, you have this green dot indicating that uh, this is like okay, the customer had interacted to your mail. You can pick which mail you are going to use, like customer satisfaction survey. Which click uh, they click the mail, which link did uh, they click, or just open the mail. Or uh, if they don't, then you have like another action uh, based on 
not interacting like let's wait, wait for three days and send another follow up mail. Okay, and uh, you can use one of your existing templates that you you can uh, basically redefine in the system. So as you can see, it's quite straightforward. Uh, it's quite easy to use, uh, and uh, and uh, click dimensions here as an application built on uh, CRM capabilities. You can use it to automate your marketing campaigns, and uh, it's it's uh, and it's one of the available applications based on Dynamics 365. And there's a huge market out there with huge ecosystem with different applications, but we are currently uh, dealing with click dimensions, which is one of our preferred partners. Thank thanks, you. Thanks, Fadi. Thanks very much for that. Um, I appreciate that that was very much a whistle-stop tour of the, I suppose, the digital acquisition piece, um, how that you convert that to a lead, you know, move it on through the qualification process, and also how um, using something like click dimensions, you can automate that, you know, onboarding or more put in place more sophisticated marketing processes. What I want to do very quickly um, is the last piece I'm going to share is a quick Power BI demo um, of, uh, you know, looking, getting the data out of CRM into Power BI and how you can use that to evaluate the forms of your business. Before I do that, I'm just going to take 30 seconds. Customer Insights is a new product that went to market April this year. It's an app that sits within the Power Platform family, um, so, you know, part of CRM or complementary to CRM. And this is really where that AI investment is kind of commoditizing the, the benefit to, to us and to you, um, people that use the platform. This can take data from your CRM, you know, so lead opportunity data, bring in maybe sales data from another system. So whether it's a Microsoft product like NAV or SAP or Oracle, it doesn't really matter. Bring in weather data, bring in social information and create a 360 degree view of your customer. So you can start to score customers based on, you know, whether they're at risk of attrition or churn um, and what's the likelihood they're going to buy again from you um, and what's the probability, what's the actual probability of that likelihood. So this is, you know, by being on the platform, you get the benefit of this. There's too much in here for us to really cover today. Um, but the key thing is, this is where it's going. And by being on a platform, you know, like Dynamic CRM and having that power platform, you know, driving your business, you get to benefit either now or in due course for, from these types of investments, um, which will become more and more important uh, in terms of kind of maximizing revenue. So the last piece I'm going to show very quickly is Power BI. So this is a fictitious motor company, uh, Acme Motors. Um, and what we've done here is we have simply taken lead and opportunity information out of CRM. Um, so from the common data model up into Power BI, we're looking at this in our web page, but this could just as easily be uh, visualized or manifest within CRM as well, depending on your user. And really what you're seeing here is simply, you know, I'm looking at my open opportunities. I can look at any particular branch and I can see kind of how that branch is performing. Um, and my Wi-Fi is a little bit slow now, so it's it's uh, struggling here to limit down the names of the people. But I can see who are my top performers, who's discounting, uh, what my opportunity pipeline looks like. If I want to move into maybe closed opportunities, uh, so effectively this is your one business. I get a very very similar view, but where it's limited to one, so I can see you know who my top salespeople are. Um, what percentage are they discounting? And that's really important because they might be selling a lot, but if they're discounting a lot, you know, the, the margin attached to that, um, you know, is diminishing the profitability of the business as a whole. I can see how I'm performing year over year. And again, you get another view maybe by dealership to see is any particular dealer discounting more heavily or, or maybe who's positioning and maximizing margin by positioning more, um, you know, accessories as part of the sale. This is all CRM data, could easily be augmented with non-CRM data as well. Um, but the one I want to get to actually is this marketing performance piece. So this is where you're getting that whole lineage of the investment you make in marketing. Um, 
and how that converts through to opportunity and ultimately what sales does it result in. So again, you've all of your dealerships listed, you know, there's, there's 25 odd thousand leads, you know, 22% are qualifying, which effectively is, you know, that that's your, your number of opportunities in broad strokes, where people are coming in, in, in the auto industry, creating an appointment with someone is a key part of the sales cycle. It's, it's kind of critical in, in getting that, um, I suppose, converting the sale. Um, and then what percentage of your leads and ultimately your opportunities convert to one sales as well. So here, you know, it's 5% um, and 22% respectively. So 5% of our leads, 22% of our opportunities result in sales. But what's nice about this is I can look at this, I can look at any of the dealerships and I can look at, based on my CRM data, what's actually driving, um, which campaigns are resulting in the highest conversions and what's my return on investment for those as well. So this is really, really powerful in terms of figuring out where my marketing spend should go. What's nice with this is then, you know, with some of the visuals in Power BI, you can move to these bubble charts. So you can start to look at campaigns and you can start to look at, you know, where the leads are converting and the opportunities are converting, where the bulk of my revenue is coming from and which ones are more successful, or maybe taking another view where you're looking at dealerships rather than campaigns, uh, similar type of a view, but all of a sudden you start to get a sense for who's playing really, really well. Who's, who's really doing well on converting their leads and opportunities and who's doing very, very poorly in that space. So I know that was kind of, we're pretty much up on time and that was very much whistle stop, um, but hopefully that gave you a sense for, you know, what we set out to achieve today, which was, you know, that digital conversion, um, campaign you know management and automation through something like click dimensions and then lastly how you can get insight into both the sales performance of your business um, and the performance of your marketing using something like a, a power bi so as we hit the the time do, are there any questions any takers I think most people are on mute, so I can uh, I can unmute folks. Anybody got any questions on anything that they've seen today that you'd like to know more about? What we will do is we will be sending a follow-up email anyway uh, with a link to the, the recording of this webinar. So if there's anything there that you want to see again. Um, the other thing we would like to offer people as well is if they're interested in having a follow-on conversation, um, we'd like to offer a complimentary consulting session uh, with myself um, and uh, one of our CRM consultants to review what it is you'd like to achieve in this space and how you know some of the things that you saw today might help you achieve that. Thank you very much for your time and have a good day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.